Welcome. It is one o'clock on the West Coast. It is Hug Nation time all over the world. If you're watching on Archive, then it is Hug Nation time in your now. Hug Nation is a intentional gathering of vibration and amplification, a acknowledgement that when we surrender to love and to connection, to unity and to harmony, whatever comes is more glorious, more wonderful, and more beautiful than what our ego minds can make happen. And that regardless of what we hear on the news, the world would far rather hug you than hurt you. This week I wanted to talk about women. I actually mentioned that I was going to, the topic was going to be women, and uh, I got a couple chuckles. And I want to clarify that I'm not talking about, say, meeting women, or hooking up with women, or women, in that sense. There's just been a number of things this week that have made me think about women and the feminine and girls. And I want to just address those. One of those is that it was Mother's Day this weekend. And Mother's Day is always a wonderful time for me to really think about the gifts that I've received from the feminine presence in my life. And as someone who is not married and has no female offspring that I have been subpoenaed to know about. My mom is my real, my, my focal female in my life that I've learned so much about what, what a woman is and what uh, the feminine energy is. And in some ways when I'm talking about women here, I'm also talking about the feminine energy, which is present in everyone. And it's the balance between those that kind of defines who we are in the world. And so Mother's Day really got me thinking. And then I was reminded of a video that went around the web uh, several weeks ago. It was, I think it was called Dear Women. And it was an apology uh, that was written by a bunch of very progressive, spiritually open, evolved men um, that y you may have seen. It got very mixed reviews. Some people loved it. Some people were just thought it was horrific. And um, I want to address that a little bit. And then the, the, the third thing that I saw recently was a trailer for a movie called Miss Representation. Miss M-I-S-S. -S. And the Miss Representation trailer, which is for a documentary that I believe is showing at Sundance this year, the message in that was really showing how powerful the messaging that children and our culture is saying about women, and specifically about body, and about objectification, and about beauty as being this really, that's what makes, that's your source of power as a woman. That is your, that is your purpose, that is your meaning, that is your value. And so it was these three things that really got me stewing about thinking about uh, the feminine. And if you're newly tuning in, you might be thinking, wait a minute, this gentleman is not a woman. And I want to acknowledge, I, I'm, I'm not a woman and I'm just kind of speaking to my thoughts around this issue. And one of the reasons I want to talk about this, this is because in thinking about the feminine and thinking about the feminine energy, I realize that a lot of what I do talk about here is really addressed towards the masculine. I, I think about it in terms of the status quo. I think about it in terms of the, our culture and the values that our culture is putting on and the values that our status quo is kind of forcing into our, our personas and into our ego. But the reason why they're so prevalent is because the masculine is so prevalent in our society and is so prevalent in me. And so the values such as achievement, as, uh, as you know, climbing, as of dominance, as of power and strength and, and, and winning, these are masculine traits. And so they are kind of a, a repeated theme that we talk about here are how much of these what I consider to be status quo or cultural values come from the outside versus come from the inside. And, you know, upon reflection, those are, the majority of those are very masculine energies and masculine traits. So I wanted to address the feminine traits that are also being layered on from the outside, meaning these are values that we grow up with, that we begin to 
internalize and feel and fight for and strive for, but really may or may not resonate with what we are inside. And in the feminine world, those are, you know, beauty, um, harmony, um, nurturing. These are the values that we kind of place upon the female. Now, just as there are pros and cons to the masculine energies, there are pros and cons to the feminine energies. And, and the key is not discarding all of these things. The key is, is having critical thought about how they are coming from the inside versus coming from the outside and acknowledging how they play in your culture and how therefore you need to, if you want to work within the system, be aware of how these values work and play the games if you wish or reject the games, but know that the games are taking place. Clearly, um, you know, in our culture, striving, achieving, status, money, power, are ways to, you know, have, have power in the world. If you are a, a pretty young woman, you can gain power by playing the game with your wily feminine charms. There are a number of ways that a woman can, you know, succeed in our culture by playing the game and utilizing these, her beauty. Is that better or worse than, you know, than using the skills of dominance and strength and aggression. Well, I don't know what's better or worse, but these are definitely at play. So I think the part that gets important is when we don't question and we simply allow them to be layered on top of us. You know, being focused on beauty, being um, whether that is in the creation of beauty, whether that is in the creation of beauty in ourselves, is nothing wrong with that unless we become paralyzed by it, unless we become fixated by it. And I think that's when it gets scary, is when, is when the messaging to a young child is that their only value is if, you know, if they're thin or if they're busty or if they're you know, sexy. It robs this individual of, uh, of the inertia to explore other parts of their strengths and their gifts. So, I guess that's why I just wanted to bring it up. Now, the, the video about Dear Women, it was, it was put together as an apology. Apology on behalf of men throughout history for all these atrocities that happened. And there were some wonderful things about it. Like I really liked the idea that, hey, let's apologize for what's happened and then let's acknowledge that there's a lot of men who, who value and want to put the feminine on a pedestal and, and, and move forward and create together with the masculine feminine and you know, with respect. And I think that's awesome. Some things about the tone of it uh, made this kind of harsh division between, you know, the existing power structure of men and the people who are delivering the message. And I don't know, there's something about that that, um, it didn't resonate with me as deeply. While I liked elements of the message, the delivery and the, and the style, it just didn't, it, it, I, you know, it wasn't something that I wanted to put my, my name on in its existing form. But I think that there is something really important about the idea that we have masculine and feminine energies that are being becoming more and more exaggerated in culture and that that is never going to get us to where we want to be. One of the bummers about that is because evolutionary pressures of you know the dominance and the strength really encourage that and our capitalist structure is also based on dominance and success and achievement and acquisition and hoarding, which is the masculine versus the feminine, much more of a uh, sharing and such. But it wasn't always that way. My mom was telling me, um, you know, that in the Ben Franklin era, he never patented things that he discovered because he had enough money. And so once he had enough, 
his discoveries were on behalf of society. He wanted to raise the level of mankind or womankind. So I guess I just wanted to say that I acknowledge that my upbringing in this culture has been tainted by much of this attitudes. I am in the process as an adult now trying to be critical of my beliefs, not so much like conscious beliefs, but subconscious beliefs about men and women and roles and abilities and talents and trying to be very critical when I make assumptions or being very critical when I, you know, do a sort of gender bigotry in my head. You know, I I'm being very clear in myself that I have these thoughts and patterns. I think I mentioned recently that I was, when I was in Venice Beach and there was a number of, you know, uh, inner city kids um, of all sort of ethnicities and I was a little uncomfortable. I felt a little, at, uh, you know, not at ease. And I, as it was happening, I was aware that I was having these feelings. And I also am aware sometimes when I have these feelings of making an assumption that, you know, a, a, a man is better for a certain job than another. And, you know, obviously that, that's not a logical step, but those are in there. And I think that we have those culture-wide. So I am in the process, too, of trying to value the feminine, especially now as I see, and maybe this is, I'm kind of getting there a roundabout way, but as our culture values the masculine, the dominant, the strength, the achievement, the climbing, it gets us deeper and deeper into the problems that we have. If we are valuing females and women on their appearance and on beauty, it's not in and of itself a bad thing. What it's a problem is, is when we are not also valuing the strengths of harmony, of compromise, of nurturing. Because those are the traits that can get us out of some of these deep grooves of dysfunction in our culture, the deep grooves of conflict. You know, in the struggles of you know, the last week, as we had um, different sects of our country being celebrating um, death and those, you know, kind of a little bit more somber acknowledgement of, of, the, of bin Laden's uh, killing, you know, I think that was very much a masculine feminine kind of conflict of, you know, victory versus, okay, how do we get to harmony from here? So, I don't want to discourage women from wearing hot pants and fishnets and being gorgeous and beautiful. And I am going to continue to wear hot pants and fishnets and making myself beautiful because I embrace that feminine side of me as well. But I think that the dialogue needs to be about valuing all the strengths, valuing the parts, the, 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 the feminine energies that can allow for peace, that can allow for harmony. Along those lines, I realize that I don't use the word peace too often because peace feels stagnant and I don't think anything in the world is stagnant. I think harmony is what you shoot for. Nothing in nature is at peace, but it is in harmony. To try to find peace is something that is dead. Like there's peace on the moon because it is just dead there. There's harmony in an ecosystem. There's harmony in our bodies. There's harmony in a system with nature that is working. And there should be harmony in our masculine and feminine energies within us and harmony in the masculine and feminine energies in our culture and in the world. And that's the harmony that can make massive change in the direction of the species and the planet. So thank you women. Thank you, women. Thank you to those who are raising girls. Thank you to those who honor their mothers. And thank you to the mothers. <sighs> mothers 
are the life givers. Mothers are the miracle makers. Mothers are the ones that bridge our consciousness from fuzzy gray into identity. And that critical role is what prepares every individual for the path towards personal discovery and hopefully awakening to their divine gifts. Really, mothers are the stewards of that process. And it's, we need to recognize that all mothers do the best they can. So thank you to all the mothers. You only live once. Enjoy the color.